All right, let's get in depth with 3D. If you saw the intro tutorial, I apologize for repeating myself. I'll try to go fast. The first thing you'll notice is that we're looking at this in 2D. If you hold down Alt, click and drag, then you can rotate the camera, middle mouse button pans, right click zooms. From here, you can't interact with or touch anything. In order to interact again, press reset camera view, and then you can make selections. I think we will eventually support 3D interactions. The 3D mesh depth multiplier is probably the most powerful control. We generate a depth map, and then you can apply it here. One is the default, but we can crank that up. I think 1.5 would look about right. The next important control is the smooth interval. Its default is 30, but I would suggest on most projects, you see how it looks at zero. The way the smoothing interval works is on your hero frame, which you have to create, our depth estimator is going to look at the footage and try to make a depth estimate and apply it to the mesh, while still keeping everything aligned in 2D, no matter how far the depth goes out or in. When the smooth interval is set to zero, for example, we only calculate depth on this hero frame. You'll notice that nothing is actually moving forward and backward in space. If it does look like it's moving in Z, that's just an illusion because things are moving left and right as well. If we set the smooth interval to one, the depth is estimated separately on every frame. So you'll get flicker. If I set the smooth interval to 30, depth will be calculated on the first frame. And then it will also be calculated 30 frames from now. And then 30 frames from then. And 30 frames from then. And so on. The result is much smoother. And you'll see that it actually is moving forward and backward in space. Every 30 frames, it might change directions. I'm just going to move back out into After Effects. If I change my render mode to depth, this is what the raw output looks like. So just to be super clear, when the depth interval is set to 30, we're only calculating depth on frame 0, on frame 30, 60, 90, 120, and so on. The trick is to find a balance to use as few depth frames as possible, but still properly represent the depth as your object is moving. It's also important to point out that the depth will process 30 times faster when it's set to process every 30 frames instead of every single frame. I really wanna make sure that this concept is clear. With this shot, absolutely nothing is tracked, and we just have this guy walking across the frame. In 3D view, I'll rotate the camera, and our smooth interval is set to one. You'll notice that it's recalculating on every frame, and he has loosely the correct depth. If I set the smooth interval to 60, I'm just gonna move through this slowly. You'll see what's happening is that here's the depth that was established on plane one. It was given depth based on where this guy was. And then this mesh is blending against the mesh at frame 60, which is right here. So this really just is not a beautiful way to do it. So how is this feature even actually useful? Let's go back into the tracking tab. I'll delete this mesh. And now I'm going to track a few points on his hat. So now these points are tracked. Let's enter the 3D tab. And while this is tough to see, let's just go to the top. You'll notice between frame zero and frame 60, this moves in a straight line. The character doesn't dip into the background like it did when there were no points tracked. And the reason is that these points on the hat are tracked and we know to take the XY motion from the XY motion of the points that are tracked. And for the Z motion, we just make a straight line from whatever the depth was on this frame straight to whatever the depth was on frame 60 because the smooth interval is 60 in this project. The short summary is the smooth interval only works when your points are actually tracked to an object. So now you should have a good idea of how to use the automatic depth estimator. Scroll down on the homepage to see everything else you can do with Lockdown 3D.